Hey guys, my name is Tyler and today I'm doing a review on the Blue Yeti microphone, which is my go-to. And in my opinion, it has two qualities you cannot live without. One, it's incredibly easy to set up and two, it has amazing sound quality. Other than that, it has been the go-to for years for all types of vloggers and podcasters. If you record musical instruments and if you look online, it has an almost perfect five-star rating with over 53,000 plus reviews on Amazon. But like with any products on earth, there are pros and cons, so I'll diagnose both. Let you make up your mind. First, I'll cover its features, then I'll show you how you can get amazing sound quality from this microphone every time. The Blue Yeti is currently selling for around $99 on Amazon, but there is a kit that I recommend so you can get a little bit better sound that's about $159, and I'll leave the links below. They also do offer a couple of different color variations, so if you don't care about the color, you can save some money there. I got the black model, but I like all my tech stuff black, but you can choose whatever color you want. This is not a small microphone by any means. It comes about a foot and a half tall and weighs about three and a half pounds. And it comes with a USB cable compatible with Mac or PC right out of the box, which is nice. Although you can fold the microphone to make it a bit more petite, I'd say primarily it's used as a desktop or something on like a boom arm like I have for convenience. I definitely still think it's the best microphone in the $100 range, as you would be missing some key features if you go any cheaper than that that the Blue Yeti does possess. Of course you could go with a lot more complicated setup like an XLR with an interface, but this USB mic is very simple and easy to use. The Blue Yeti already has an internal preamp and an analog to digital converter that takes the incoming signal, amplifies it, converts it into digital, and sends it directly into your computer, which means you don't need other gear to get started recording. The Blue Yeti does a great job at fusing professional features along with simplicity and has a multitude of features in that $100 price range, which in my opinion makes it the best. On the front of the microphone, there's a Blue Yeti logo, and underneath that, there's a button that stays lit red when the mic is powered on, and if you click the mute button, it will flash red to let you know that it's in mute mode. Under the button, there's a headphone volume knob, and if you look at the bottom, there's a headphone jack. This allows latency-free real-time monitoring of your microphone, so you can make sure your recording levels are just right and you're not peaking, which is a clutch feature to have on a microphone. What's also cool about the headphone jack is that you can not only use it to monitor your mic levels, but you can also use it to listen to your computer's audio. If you've ever had to switch back and forth with your headphones to your mic input, it's annoying. This is because of the dedicated amp and the converter that's already built into the Yeti. And there's also a USB cable port in standard thread mount on the bottom if you ever want to unscrew your side screws and remove the Blue Yeti from the included stand. This means you can use the standard thread mount to put it on a standard microphone mount. The bottom of the microphone stand comes with a sturdy foam that allows the microphone not to slip and slide around. I choose not to use it. Like I said, I like to have mine on the end of a boom. Under the mesh top, there are three indents or microphone capsules that allow the microphone to maximize efficiency in any recording situation. And on the back of the microphone, there's a gain control, which is amazing for sensitivity and casting out background noise. It helps you adjust how loud your recording is. And like I said, you can negate some of that noise by adjusting that gain. Below the gain knob, there's another knob that's a pattern selector where you can choose up to four different recording settings. I've been recording the whole time in cardioid mode. This is the most popular setting in my opinion and my go-to as it picks up sound from the front of the mic and not from the sides or the back. This is great for voiceovers, recording your voice in any situation, or a full-bodied sound. So it's great for commentary, voiceovers, podcasts, recording solo instruments. So if you have some kind of music talent, this might be the way to go. This mode is the Venn diagram icon, and it's going to pick up left and right channels of the microphone. So it's good at capturing a realistic sound from both the left and right. So if you have two sources of audio or if two people are speaking, this might be great for that, or a podcast, etc. The circle icon is the omnidirectional mode, and it's going to pick up sound equally from all around the mic. So it's going to give you a feeling as if you were there in the room. Or it's great for conference calls or if you have multiple people on a recording, a multi-person podcast. Or if you just wanted to capture ambient noise from around the room, this is what you would use. This last mode is a bi-directional mode. It's the sideways 8 icon. And this will pick up noise from the front of the mic and from the back of the mic. So it's great if you have a two-person conversation, if you're recording two people or more, or a podcast or some type of conversation with just two people. It's going to pick up sound equally from the front and the back, but it's going to eliminate the side of the microphone sounds. So it's great, like I said, for just two sound sources. Hopefully that helps you understand the four settings of the microphone. Now let's talk about how to get great audio quality out of it. It records in 16-bit at 48 kilohertz, and is perfect for the following types of uses. The voiceovers, the podcast, videos, recording YouTubes, audio for video chats, live streams, Skype, 
YouTube Live, Facebook Live, TikToks, FaceTime, if you're recording vocals or instrumentals, or if you're just singing or rapping, the Yeti just does an excellent job at capturing the voice and the way it sounds in real life with all of the different pitches and tones with clarity as well. So to get the best sound, you want to make sure that you're speaking into the front of the microphone and not the top. A lot of people think that the microphone records from the top, but it does not. It records from the front. So it's crucial that you're speaking directly into the microphone. And as you can see from how I'm speaking into it, there's a difference for sure when you're speaking about a foot away or if you're right up close to it about three or four inches. So you can get as personal as you want. I'm Batman. Or you can speak out here and you are going to get better sound quality than if you were just to have a general internal microphone or the microphone on your camera. I prefer to record my audio on the Premiere Pro because I'm already doing my video editing on there, but there are GarageBand and Audacity and lots of other programs that are free for the most part that you can use to get great sound. I personally love Audacity's one feature of removing grain or background noise. Other than that, I usually just let it ride and I will use a pop filter or a pop shield and I will try and do the best I can to get rid of the ambient noise by unplugging things that are unneeded. The pop filter helps you avoid the high popping noises like popcorn, playa, and things like that that are going to read above the red line in your software and make your audio sound like shh. I'll leave a link below to the pop filters that I use, and like I said, it's just about doing the best you can. Not all of us have a professional recording studio. Take me, for example. This is probably the lowest recorded quality you'll ever hear off this mic because I am in a giant vacuous space and I have done almost zero to ensure the best sound that I can, minus the pop shield and the pop filter here and uh, a couple of little things. I put a little piece of foam underneath it so it doesn't reverb off my desk. But I do have concrete floors and that makes for a terrible sound. So if you even start by recording in your bedroom and you have carpet on the floor, you're probably going to have sound twice as good as what I have right now. For troubleshooting, if you are having problems with a lot of background noise, remember I said go to the gain button in the back and adjust that accordingly and do some test runs to see if you like the results. Adjusting the gain button combined with these pop filters should allow you to get a pretty clean audio in raw format and then you can clean it up even more in post-production. With all that covered, I'm still firm that the Blue Yeti is the best microphone on the market for the price, but if you are on a budget and you cannot afford the Blue Yeti, I would recommend the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB mic. It's currently about half the cost of the Blue Yeti and you can pick it up on Amazon. I'll leave the link below and you can delve into both of them for yourself. Okay, that being said, I'm going to do a couple of test sounds for you like I promised so that you can see what the intended use for you might be. Testing one, two, testing one, two, I'm four inches away. Testing one, two, testing one, two, I'm one foot away. Testing one, two, testing one, two, I'm about three inches away. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. I'm nice and relaxed. Talking from about two feet away. I hope that helps. Okay, guys, I think you can tell I love this microphone. I will leave a link in the description below for the newest version of the Blue Yeti on Amazon. And if you would please give me a thumbs up and a subscription if you want to see more reviews like this in the future, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching.